The Sunday TV Mass is brought to you by the Catholic Diocese of Sioux Falls with support from the Catholic Diocese of Rapid City, the Catholic Family Sharing Appeal, the generosity of viewers like you, and from a grant from the Catholic Community Foundation for Eastern South Dakota, which raises, manages, and distributes God's gifts to donor-directed ministries. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God. mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. So 
God, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Zerach. When a sieve is shaken, the husks appear. So do one's faults when one speaks. As the test of what the potter molds is in the furnace, so in tribulation is the test of the just. The fruit of a tree shows the care it has had. So too does one's speech disclose the bent of one's mind. Praise no one before he speaks, for it is then that people are tested. The word of the Lord. will flourish like the palm tree and grow like a Lebanon cedar planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the corner. 
courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you, to give thanks to you. Still bearing fruit when they are old, still full of sap, still green, to proclaim that the Lord is upright, in him my rock there is no wrong. Lord, it is good to give thanks to A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. <clears throat> the word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher. But when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you not notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite! Remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, 
nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For people do not pick figs from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person out of the store of his goodness in his heart produces good, but an evil person out of a store of evil produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you for praying with us today as we celebrate the eighth Sunday in Ordinary Time. And as always, we welcome the visitors to our Cathedral St. Joseph and Mother Church and those who join us by way of television and social media. Have you ever said something and then regretted it? Even been embarrassed, ashamed? I have. As the founding father, Benjamin Franklin, once said, from the slip of the foot, you may soon recover, but a slip of the tongue, you may never get over. On the other hand, has someone ever said something to you which so moved you, uplifted you, and encouraged you because it's so sensitive and caring? I've experienced that as well. We reveal so much about ourselves and others reveal so much about themselves to us by not only what we do and not do, but what we say and do not say. Sirach in our first reading states it clearly, praise no one before he speaks, for it is then that people are tested. Jesus in Luke's gospel continues this theme of how clearly we reveal ourselves by what we say and how we say it. Can a blind person guide a blind man? Will not both fall into a pit? Blindness includes lack of insight morally and living good lives. And Jesus continues, no disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Jesus is the greatest of teachers, and none of us have been fully trained to be fully like him. School remains open for us as we continue in our formation as disciples of Christ to become more like him. Each of us is both teacher and student throughout our lives. We are teachers when people seek our advice. If we respond out of experience, we can be helpful. Respond out of our ignorance, jealousy, or malice, we will only lead them astray, perhaps even to sin. As a lawyer and a priest, I might be able to offer some insights based on my formation in those two professions. But you should take advice from the gifted musicians in the choir loft if you wish to learn about sacred music. And so it is in all areas. We are students when we seek the advice and example of others, we should be careful who we allow to be our teachers. Are they competent or blind? Jesus said, why do you notice a splinter in your brother's eye, but do not, do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? Remove the wooden beam from your own eye first. Then you'll see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. What other wooden beams in our eyes, perhaps based on prejudice or jealousy or gossip? A professor in a theology class announced that his next lecture would be about sin and deceit. 
in preparation, he asked his students to read the 17th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. The next class, he asked who had completed the assignment, and most of the hands went up. Thank you, said the professor. It's to those like you that today's lecture on sin and deceit is especially addressed, because there is no 17th chapter of Mark. A wooden beam was revealed. The lesson for us is that we not only have no right to criticize others unless we ourselves are free from similar faults, and that we need to acknowledge that we cannot fully see the faults of others because our sight is marred by our own. Someone said, there is so much bad in the best of us and so much good in the worst of us that it ill becomes any of us to find fault with the rest of us. One thing I've learned often the hard way is how much we do not know about each other, nor do others understand all there is about us. The wooden beam in our own eyes blinds us sometimes even to ourselves. Most of us can remember times when others have misinterpreted our words and actions. When I worked as legal counsel to a governor of Wisconsin, I once missed a deadline for a legal filing as a result of my incompetence which is interpreted by some who loudly proclaimed that I did it on purpose. Righteous indignity toward them did not soothe my conscience. We cannot control what conclusions others draw. We just need to be honest about our own sins and failings, our own wooden beams, and take them to the Lord. Jesus reminds us that we will ultimately be judged by both what we do and say, how well we treat others, as we would like to be treated. There's an old adage, don't do what I do, do what I say. Unfortunately, this is the choice of so many in all walks of life, family life, political life, business life, and in the church, especially by priests and bishops, as a sad scandal of our day, which seems far from justice and accountability after so many years, continues. Destructive words and actions can never take the place of good deeds and kind words for those who seek to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. A good person, out of the store of goodness in his heart, produces good. From the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks, Jesus reminds us. Nothing reveals what is in our heart, thinks the words speak. Nothing reveals what is in our heart, thinks the words we speak about and to others. This is especially so when we speak out of emotions or feelings and anger or an unhealthy passion. Little things could be instructive. For instance, how good a patient are you or me? I know someone who had been quite sick and was described by one of his nurses as a typical Irishman. It wasn't a compliment. In contrast, I was recently ministered ministered to by a couple to whom I sought to minister while one was suffering from a rare form of cancer. And their depth of faith and deep relationship with Christ sustained them and taught me to seek to deepen my own faith. They witnessed what St. Paul proclaimed in the second reading, be firm, steadfast, always devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. At ordinations, the bishop places the book of Gospels in the hands of each person being ordained as he proclaims this charge. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. That's a challenge for all of us, whatever our vocation. When we believe what we read, we are students. And when we teach what we believe, it's up. we ourselves are teachers. And when we practice what we teach, we are disciples of Christ. When we practice what Jesus teaches, especially by what we say, we will speak with a full heart. Sirach is right when this inspired word of God challenges us. When we speak, we are tested. As we begin Lent this week, we might reflect on our wooden beams, and humbly ask our teacher to free us from them.
Let us proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty. As people of faith and hope, we bring our prayers and needs before a loving and merciful God. That God will increase the faith and charity of his people so that the church around the world will bear good fruit, we pray to the Lord. That those who govern us may be given the gifts of wisdom and knowledge so that they may govern well, we pray to the Lord. For those in most in need, especially the sick, the suffering, the homeless, the jobless, the persecuted, and the imprisoned, those suffering from the winter weather, that the Lord will be close to them, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That our Catholic family sharing appeal, beginning this weekend, may be successful in our parish and throughout the diocese so that we may provide for the vital ministries that make us a Catholic family, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For those who risk their lives to protect us and others, that they will be strengthened and rewarded for their self-sacrifice, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That our parish will grow in holiness and in the stewardship way of life by acknowledging God as our master we pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty God, we ask you to receive our prayers, those spoken and those we hold in our hearts. We offer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Turn to me, O Lord, and deliver my soul. Save me for the sake of your love. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Lay down. 
life, and now I live in Him. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, thy morn shall rise, and all thy day be bright. I looked to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name, and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion. We ask of your mercy that what you grant as a source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or the offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servant and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hand of a holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty. So all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with the holy apostles and martyrs, 
with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy.
I will sing to the Lord who has been bountiful with me. I will sing to the Lord who has been bountiful with me. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear grief in my soul, have sorrow in my heart all day long? Have song, shall my enemy prevail over me? I will sing to the Lord who has been bountiful. Answer me, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I fall asleep in death. Lest my enemies say I have overcome him. Lest my foes rejoice when they see me fall. I will sing to the Lord who has been bountiful with me. As for me, I trust in your merciful love. Let my heart rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord who has been bountiful with me. I will sing psalms to the name of the Lord Most High. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I will sing to the Lord who has been bountiful Mom. 
when I walk through the shades of death, thy presence is my stay. One word of thy supporting breath drives all Still my table spread, my cup with blessings overflows, thy oil anoints my head. The of my God attend me all my days. Oh, may thy house be my abode and all my work be praised. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. May he turn your steps toward himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace.
We welcome your comments, questions, and intentions for this weekly celebration. If you would like to receive the leaflet missile or would like to learn more about the Catholic faith, please write to our address, The Sunday TV Mass, 523 North Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57104. The Sunday TV Mass is made possible by the Catholic Family Sharing Appeal and the generous support of our viewers. See